Okay. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is a online learning community across 150 countries with thousands of members and thousands of online courses. If you click the link below and you're one of the first 1,000 to do that, you will get free access to Skillshare for a month. Now, I have been watching a video today um, from a guy called Justin Bridges, and he's got some fantastic courses on there. Uh, but the one I was watching today is called The Fundamentals of Portrait Photography. Now, I know lots of you love portrait photography because I get your messages about it, and I know that you want to upskill yourselves further in this area. So if you click that link below, go over and watch his video because it really takes you through how to get drama in your portraits using natural light. And that's a really great thing to learn, to really um, capture some beautiful images of people using natural light, where to stand, how to place the camera, where to place the light, um, in terms of yourself to the light source, maybe a window or something. You know, really interesting things on the, on the course. So click the link below, go over and watch it, and uh, yeah, really grow your photography skills. Now, I... Thank you so much for all the questions that you've been sending me. So many questions. And I love, those of you who are new to my channel, um, once a month I love to do a Q&A because I get so many questions from you um, on my YouTube channel and my Patreon channel. And it's very easy with the Patreon channel because actually people who are on there have got direct access to basically, it's like texting me. So I get lots of messages from my Patreon followers and that's brilliant. Um, so click on the link, come and join me on Patreon because it's a really good way to ask me questions. And also I've got loads of stuff on there that you can, um, uh, you can look at um, and hopefully learn from as well. And uh, so apart from that, I've get loads of questions on YouTube and I can't always answer them. Basically on the community tab, when I go onto, onto YouTube, you get all your latest comments and questions, but there are just so many, I cannot get through them all um, every day. So I do a Q and A once a month to allow you really opportunity to just ask me whatever you want. And I just, you know, I'll answer them as best I can, as quickly as I can, um, to get through them. But last month we had so many, I didn't get through them all. Um, so I'm gonna try and get through the rest of the questions from last month, and then we'll get some more for next month. So let's do this nice and quick. Um, okay, this one is from Alex Kennedy, and it says, looking at getting a camera for travel, family, and some portraits. See, it's portraiture again. Um, been debating if I really need IBIS or not. Also be able to hand over the camera to my wife for auto mode shots. Been thinking for size, the Fuji X-T30 Mark II or the X-S10 or the Sony A6400, interesting. Also, what prime lenses do you recommend for the 18 to 55 f2.8 to four zoom lens? Um, I have been looking at the, so I'm just trying to understand that question. I've been looking at the Samyang Fuji X mount lenses, but not sure if they're okay or not for both prime and a better zoom lens, or are there other better models? Right, we'll just take that as it is. Okay, so the first thing is Fuji X-T30 Mark II, XS10 or the Sony A6400. Well, I had the Sony A6400 for at least a year or so, which isn't bad for me. <laughs> I get rid of cameras quite quickly. And I did like it, but it felt a little soulless, if I'm honest. I used it for video mainly, and I, it was all right. It was about the size of my, um, a little bit, bit bigger than the XE1, XE2, but you know, that kind of size-ish. Um, but I just found it not, it was all right. It did the job, but I didn't love it. The X-T30 Mark II, I had that for a few months and I've got some reviews on that and I loved that camera. I really, really loved that camera. So that would be my favorite. In fact, I was looking between the X-H1 and the, um, what else did you say there, the X-S10. I actually spent a long time debating between those two cameras. And I, in the end, I decided that the, the X-S10 was just a little bit too much like a DSLR for me, um, but, it's got some fantastic features. In fact, I'm recording now on the X-T4 and a lot of the X-T4 is in the X-S10. So if you don't care about the fact that it looks a little bit like a DSLR, cause it's got the PASM dial and all that, then get the X-S10 because you've got IBIS in there. And I know your question began about IBIS and I would say IBIS, if you're taking portraits, IBIS is a real help. Now it won't stop 
the blur from the person moving, your subject, but it will stop blur from your own handshakes. Um, and also will enable you to get down to some lower shutter speeds and maybe be a bit creative with that. So if it was me buying just for portraits, it'd be between the two Fuji films. Um, ah, tough one. I love, I prefer the look of the XT30 Mark II, but I love the features of the XS10. That's all I can say. So I would say if I bet is a must, which I think it's really important um, for that, go for the um, XS10. Um, it is an amazing camera and it's got it's packed full of great features. Um, in terms of prime lenses, um, I think you're asking me what prime lenses do I recommend um, or the 18 to 55 F2. Um, I've got the 18 to 55 back there somewhere. Um, and uh, I used to, used to shoot a lot of video on that until I got this Seven Artisans 50 millimeter f 1.05 and oh my goodness that lens is amazing but I'm filming on it now and it's a manual focus lens and it just creates the most beautiful imagery um, so I would say if you you know are looking at manual focus lenses look at my video I'll link it on the thing above and um, watch that video and I think that's an amazing amazing lens um, but yes the 18 to 55 is a great lens um, I don't really use it I use it a little bit for some landscape photos when I did my book um, I now kind of keep it mainly for some video work um, I would say if you're going to be traveling I would get the the f2 lenses the prime lenses they're just brilliant and they're quite cheap so Fujifilm 50 mil um, or this 50 mil um, on my camera now um, the seven answer sands um, the 23 mil get the 1.4 if you can but all the f2 um, those lenses the f2 range they're really reasonably priced they match up with the xt32 perfectly um, 30 mark II, and um, yeah i think that would be a good way to go have have fun um, right next question is from uh, AJ the Alchemist, <laughs> interesting. Um, what's your absolute favorite custom film simulation? My absolute favorite custom film simulation is actually one that I made. Um, on my Patreon channel, I've got about four on there that I've made, four or five. And my favorite of them all is the Kodak Ektar. Um, it's just beautiful. It's got the, the real golds and reds, oranges in it. And it's just that lovely film that um, I used to shoot with all the time on my... Um, film cameras so yeah that is the answer come on to my some people just come to my patreon channel for a month honestly they get my film simulations put them into their camera and then leave and that is absolutely fine so just do that come and get them um from lee hartman if you could only have one lens for landscape which one and why well that changes all the time for me depending on the type of landscapes that i'm trying to shoot um, if I'm going for like portraits in the landscape or if I'm going for big wide landscapes. So, but I would say the one that I've enjoyed most recently is the one on my GFX, which is the um, GF 35 to 70 mil, which is basically the 28 to 55 mil. And it's on the GFX, which is, you know, the most amazing camera um, for capturing the detail. But I love that four by three, it's just beautiful. Um, and also that lens is amazing. It's a really lightweight lens, but it's so clear. Um, and you can, you know, I've been adding grain in and trying to kind of make it look more filmic and it just seems to work. Um, you know, Fujifilm have this, even in their highest end cameras, they've got this ability to allow their images to take that grainy kind of filmic look, um, even at 50 megapixels on a, a medium format camera. Um, so yeah, the 35 to 70, it kind of covers all my bases because um, I love that, um, you know, the 20s, 35 mil, just beautiful. Um, I love the um, 50 mil. So you, I've got my favorite focal lengths in that, in that lens. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay, next one from, uh, sorry, if I say, sorry if I say this wrong. It's Nekemaya Davis. Um, do you use the XE1 a lot still? I sold my XE1. <laughs> Boo hoo! I love my XE1, um, but I sold it um, at the end of last year. I actually had a big clear out of cameras, um, a bit of a weepy day selling them, but I'm quite ruthless with cameras. As you'll notice, I buy a lot of them and I sell a lot of them. Um, you know, it's my job to 
to shoot for people. And so I'm always looking for new cameras, new styles. And I just see, I, I see the kind of secondhand camera market like a library that <laughs> you want to go and get a book out, go and get a book out. You know, so I go out, I buy a camera, I use it for a bit and I sell it back. Um, and uh, I find it's quite a cost effective way of doing it. Now with the GFX, I bought that brand new. So that's staying. But for you know cameras that are a bit older and a bit cheaper, I'm very happy to just buy them and sell them and do that on a regular basis. So, but I did love that camera completely. Um, but in the end, I decided to keep my XM1, same sensor, and just use that. Um, okay, so a question from not Sunguard. Okay, um, free from any commercial considerations, what would your ideal day of photography look like? Oh, a very easy one for me. It would be um, somewhere like Greenland or um, Antarctica, um, shooting ice. I love, love, love shooting ice. I love shooting cold landscapes that are that look moody, that look got that kind of real texture to them, that look dramatic, um, look a bit like you know something from Lord of the Rings or you know that kind of landscape that's just got that mood. I love the Isle of Skye because it's a similar type of landscape without all the ice most of the time. Um, um, yeah so definitely something like that. I nearly went to Svalbard last year to shoot um, or photograph the, um, the landscape and polar bears and arctic foxes and that but it fell through um, towards the end of the year but maybe maybe this year you never know that would be good. one of my dreams. Um, right Next question. Um, let's go to the next one. Where am I? Um, okay. How many? This is from Arthur's Baltakis. I'm sorry if I'm getting these wrong. Um, how many after coloring is used um, for pictures in your books? Are oh, interesting. A mixture. A real mixture. So sometimes I leave it as is and the light is great and I just literally, you know, allow the, the scene to be as it is. Sometimes if I'm somewhere and I think, actually, that needs just something to just give it a bit more life, I've created 25 presets, which you can get actually below. They're called the Edge of the World presets. And so they were the presets that I created for my book. Um, and I used those presets throughout my book. Um, they all carried the same colours, the colour palette that I was looking for. I kind of look at landscape photography a bit like um, an artist would with their palette. And I like to take um, a landscape and think, right, how do I want to show this landscape? Um, what bring out the original features and what colours are in this landscape already that I can bring out um, and add to the hue um, and to the kind of saturation levels. And so I created those 25 presets and um, then most of those are in the book. Um, and uh, yeah, there's those colour ranges. So yeah, a little bit, um, sometimes a lot. Um, it really depends on the landscape and, and what it needs. But I'm generally taking the colours that are already there and I'm using those to um, help enhance the image rather than adding a brand new colour. So that's the way I, I do it um, to help create some drama. Um, do I prefer the XM1 or the X70? I've never used, never even held the X70, so I can't really speak about that. But I do love my XM1. It's quirky. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, you know, it's old. It's not great but it's brilliant at the same time because the sense is lovely and it's got a lot of quirks to it and a lot of failure, failings to it. But as soon as you look at those pictures through the lens, you're like, oh, I love this. I love this. And so, yeah, XM1 for me is such a lovely camera. I can really recommend it if you like a bit of quirk. Um, okay. And I think this is the last one um, from Wise Dude 6 and uh, you say, hi, I would like to purchase my first Fuji. I have a Nikon D90. The use I would make of it is mainly candid moments and street random lifestyle photography. It is very important to get a firm vintage retro look straight from the camera. I'd like something on a budget, less around 200 euros. Wow, small with Fujifilm presets, Wi-Fi. You're asking quite a lot. Uh, what body and lens would I recommend? My goodness. I was going to say to you, um, for candid street moments, get yourself an X100V, but that's, uh, that's over a thousand pounds. You could go for, I think the X100F is still in the kind of 700s as far as I know. So maybe you can go for the, 
the X100S, because that's a beautiful camera. Uh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi. I don't think. Maybe it does. I don't know. Anyway, I would look at the X100 lineup. I had the X100, the first original one, and it's got obviously quite a slower autofocus, but it's a beautiful camera. It's got the original Bayer sensor in it, and it takes lovely pictures. So that I would definitely look at, but you could look at the X100S and see if that, because you've got your lens and your camera all in one, so you wouldn't have to buy another body to go with it. If you really want to get an interchangeable lens camera, then you could go for the X-T1 um, or an X-Pro1. Um, but I think the X-Pro1 would be a bit more expensive. But I think the X-T1 is around a couple of hundred mark. Um, and then you have to get a, maybe a cheap lens to go with it. But somewhere around there. If you've got to go even cheaper than that, you could have a look at something like an X-T1, X-T2. But you need to watch for the Wi-Fi situation um, on that. So it really depends on, you know, you're kind of going very early Fujifilm for that kind of price. Um, but I would look at, see what the X100s um, do for you. So yeah, that's all your questions for now. So fabulous. Um, thank you so much for asking them. Do click the links below. Um, and uh, yeah, do come and um, follow me on Patreon and send me more questions. I'll put out another thing on the community tab and uh, we'll get a whole load more questions for next month. Thanks ever so much. Bye.